These women have written very unique books of their own. Author of My Little Red Book, Rachel Calder Nailbuff, and author of What I Thought I Knew, Alice Eve Cohen. Hey there. All right, so my name's pretty hard to say, so you can just call me the period chick. Uh, yeah, so as a freshman at Yale, I just started. Let me say it's a great way to meet guys. Yeah, um, no, but seriously, periods are an essential part of being a woman, and period stories are amazing and revealing. So tonight I'm going to share with you one of my favorite stories. It's absolutely uncensored, and it's by Ellen Devine. <coughs> I was raised in a naked house, and one day when I was four, I saw my mother do something I had never seen before. Between moisturizing her legs and blow drying her hair, my mother paused, placed her right foot upon the toilet seat, reached between her legs, and pulled out a hot dog <laughs> on a string. My eyes grew wide as I watched the hot dog dangle and my mother wrapped it in a tissue and placed it on the counter. I had never seen anything like this before and it opened up a world of questions. Why did my mother store a hot dog in her vagina? Did she, did she always keep one in there? What was, she, what was she gonna do with the nap? Why was she gonna take it out? Did other women store hot dogs in their vaginas? Could my mom store more than one in there? And why did this hot dog have a string? There wasn't really the possibility that my mother might store foodstuffs in her lady parts that boggled me. No, and hot dogs were a ubiquitous part of my childhood, from meaty filler and mac and cheese to the 3D eyes and noses we used on snowmen. It was entirely conceivable that a hot dog might also be capable of serving some function in the vagina, although I had no notion of what function a hot dog or really a vagina might have. Similarly, the concept of placing foreign objects into one's orifices was not unfamiliar, as I had a friend who delighted in sticking marbles up his nose. <laughs> the source of my apprehension and the reason I felt so shaken was that my mother had inadvertently revealed to me that there was something that I, I did not know about her. On that day, I learned that my mother was more than I knew her to be. Within her were mysteries that no number of open bathrooms or dishes washed in the nude could ever reveal. So my guess is that you may not look at tampons or hot dogs in the same way. Um, and I know that I'll never look at my middle school English teacher, Ms. Devine, in the same way either, and I am so grateful. Thanks. to admit to this particular audience that I recently had the unique experience of attempting to censor my own book. My memoir begins 10 years ago with my unexpected and terrifying pregnancy at the age of 44, years after being told that I was infertile. After months of misdiagnoses and treatments, I was raised to an emergency CAT scan for a large tumor, which turned out not to be a tumor. I was six months pregnant. I was told that the fetus was damaged. I was told that this would be a girl with a penis. I was told that th she might have a fatal salt wasting disorder. I was desperate. I scheduled an appointment for a late term abortion in Wichita, Kansas. But at the last minute, I decided to have the baby. Cut to the present. My baby is 10 years old and she is a great kid. But last spring, as my publication date approached, I began to feel filled with guilt and worry that she would be hurt by my book, that she'd be traumatized to find out that I had considered an abortion. Censorship seemed like a brilliant idea. My husband and I connived how to keep the book from her, but Eliana had other plans. This book is about my birth, so of course I'm going to read it. 
and I'm going to read it before the public gets to read it in July. Well, okay, but on one condition. We'd like you to read it when mommy or daddy is at home so that we can answer your questions. So, for two days in June, Eliana and I lay down on my bed together with two copies of my book and we read side by side. She was laughing in all the right places. This was going very well. But I knew she would have very difficult questions. Questions about abortion, questions about her identity, questions about my love for her. Mom, what's a clitoris? <clears throat> she got to the part where the doctor told us that the baby would have male and female genitals. I uh, described the clitoris and its unique qualities. Okay, Mom, that's enough. She got to the part where I had scheduled an abortion. Did that hurt? Did that hurt? No. I don't care what you thought about me before I was born. I was just a fetus. She got to the page where she was finally born, and the doctor was describing her perfectly formed female genitals. Mom, what's L-A-B-I-A? -A? Okay, that's enough. She got to the epilogue, and I knew that I was home free. But suddenly, Eliana slammed the book down on the bed beside her and glared at me. Mom, how could you write that? R write, write what? Eliana has asked three different boys on three different Valentine's Days if he was her secret admirer. Mom, that was supposed to be a secret. And besides, it was only two boys on two Valentine's Days. And now hundreds of people, and if you're lucky, thousands of people are going to read about it in your book. I apologized profusely. Eliana finished reading the book turned to me and smiled. Good book, Mom. I really liked it. I'm so glad. Daddy and I were scared to let you read it. Did anything upset you? Nope. Because I knew exactly how everything was going to turn out.